you're thinking of moving to Melbourne, Florida, well, today we are going to talk about the 15 things that you may want to know when living here in Melbourne, Florida. If you're new here, I'm Rachel Langley with Florida Lifestyle Realty located right here in the Space Coast. And if this is your first time to my channel and you want to know everything there is to know about what it's like to eat, sleep, live, work, and play here in the Melbourne area, don't forget to click that little subscribe button and click that little bell for notifications because we are dropping a new video every single week about what it's like living here. And we absolutely love doing what we can to help people make that relocation here that much easier. So whether you're moving next week, next month, or even next year, reach out to us, give us a call, shoot us a text, because we've got your back when it comes to moving to the Space Coast. So without further ado, I am going to get started with the top 15 things that you need to know before moving here. Number one, Melbourne is in Brevard County. Brevard County is 72 miles long. So it's a very long county. And so whether you are moving here for a job or a lifestyle change, you'll want to make sure you are checking the distance between your new job and the property you're interested in. And also the same goes for lifestyle. If you're looking to be really, really close to the beach, then you'll want to be looking at areas on the barrier island and not inland. Number two, Melbourne is a mid-sized city, so it has everything one needs and more. But if you're picturing a large city like Orlando or Jacksonville with tall buildings, the architecture, and being able to walk around a big town town, that is not the case for Melbourne. Melbourne is super laid back, but if you're fast paced and you're used to New York City or LA and love living in a fast paced city, Melbourne will be a huge culture shock to you. Number three, Melbourne is about a 30 minute drive to Port Canaveral. So if you like to take cruises, you are in for a treat. Port Canaveral was named the busiest port in the US. So there are always tons of different options to choose from, whether you want a weekend getaway or a two week cruise around the world. We've got it. And the best part is you don't have to take a flight to get there. Number four, it's good to know that there are some beaches that are rocky. So you'll want to stay south of Indian Harbor Beach where you'll avoid most of the submerged rocks in the water. And it's a lot safer for your toes and limbs. There is a beach dog park in Indian Harbor Beach that because it's so rocky and not safe to go swimming, the town dedicated it to our fur babies. So it's a nice little treat if you have a dog to take there. Number five, locals in Melbourne are super nice, but be prepared. Some may not be as welcoming as others. There are many people who have lived in the area a long time who will tell you that the city is at full capacity and to go home. Well, yes, it has gotten more populated over the years because during the pandemic, many people were allowed to work from home and people decided they didn't want to live in a dreary cold weather area anymore or some moved because florida was a lot more open and relaxed with covid restrictions so with that came more people luckily melbourne is nothing compared to the overpopulation that places like miami and fort lauderdale incurred the traffic in those cities are insane but yes there are more people but with that comes people that have lived here a lot longer and miss the way it used to be with less people. I can't tell you how many times someone joins the local Facebook group and introduces themselves as new here or moving here. And there's a ton of super nice and helpful comments. And then there's the don't come here were full comments. So you've been warned. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that a lot of the locals here, their families or they have moved here back in the 90s or early 2000s from places like New York. And so they're not actually from here either. Number six, be prepared for your allergies to spike up a lot more frequently if you are coming from out of state. When I lived up north, my allergies usually were bad at the end of summer and beginning of spring. Well, in Florida, my allergies spike up a lot more frequently that I stockpile these next. So I don't know the exact signs of how often it happens, but it's March 7th today and my allergies flared up about twice this week. And I'll show you a picture of my car. That was pollen the other day on my car. 
It was so funny the car wash lines were super long that day. Number seven, we live on the Space Coast and it's always really fun to watch the rocket launches. I swear it never gets old. But one thing to know is that you can hear them and they launch sometimes in the middle of the night. Now, honestly, they don't wake me up anymore, but I do sleep with a fan, so maybe that helps. But nonetheless, there is a noise. Anyways, what can get a little scary is the sonic booms. Now, not all rockets create the sonic booms. I'd say maybe five times within the past year, I've heard them. So what you can do is you can sign up for text alert when the rockets are gonna be launched. But man, the sonic booms, depending where you are, they can shake your house a little. And if you're dead asleep, you can wake up pretty confused and scared when they occur. It honestly happens so rarely, it's not the biggest deal, but definitely your first time, if you don't know it's coming, it can scare you. Number eight, it's been a while because it's March right now, but we haven't had summer storms in a while. And in the summer when it downpours, I swear I've never heard more loud thunder than Florida thunder. And my poor pups need their thunder vests and are still terrified every thunderstorm. So just be prepared for that, especially when it thunders and rains cats and dogs in the middle of the night. Your fur babies or kids might be a little scared and need some love. Number nine, here's a good thing. Melbourne and many cities in Brevard County have relatively low property taxes. So if you're coming from an area with high property taxes, then you will be pleasantly surprised as you shop for a new home here. We also have homestead tax exemption. So if you are purchasing a primary home here, it'll help keep taxes a little lower. I will link below more information on the homestead tax exemption. Number 10, on the flip side of that, property insurance in Florida can be high. I'm not going to go into pricing because there are so many factors that determine the price of insurance, which are flood zones, age of roof, type of windows, age of house, and other things like if there's already been a claim on the property and so forth. But if you would like more information on that, reach out to me. My info is in the description below and we can discuss how much property insurance will likely cost you based on the size of the home you are looking for and location. Number 11, Melbourne has a ton of great shopping from the Avenues and V area, which is a stunning open air mall with tons of great designer shops and restaurants to Melbourne Square, which is your basic indoor mall with the traditional stores a mall has, to downtown Ugali that has local boutiques, galleries, cafes, and restaurants. I say this in a lot of my videos, I feel like a broken record, but I get this question all the time. Where's the closest Whole Foods and Trader Joe's? Well, the closest ones are in Orlando, an hour away but we have a ton of great grocery stores like Publix, Aldi's, and the Fresh Market, which is like a Whole Foods. We've also got many farmer's markets, so you can shop local for your produce if you like. Number 12, Melbourne is home to Vieira, which I mentioned before. And if you haven't heard of Vieira, Vieira is a master plan community that essentially is pretty new. It started being built in the mid nineties, but most of its development and homes were built from the early 2000s up until today. There are still brand new homes and businesses being built. Vieira is ranked number eight in the top 50 master plan communities in Florida and is a great area to live because it was obviously planned with convenience in mind. So there are a ton of outdoor activities from golfing to racquetball courts, pickleball courts, to shopping at the avenues. Everything was built aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So it's a nice place to live because it looks really pretty. There's many things to do and you're still only 20 minutes from the beach, but there are many great places to live in Melbourne and in the Space Coast. So even if you don't live in Vieira, it's just super nice being able to go to the avenues and use the different amenities that Vieira has to offer. Number 13, I'm just going to combine all the animals and critters into one. Okay, so we've got alligators, we've got snakes, we have lizards, and we have bugs, especially big cockroaches that are called palmetto bugs. Here are some tips. Don't go swimming in ponds, lakes, or even the rivers. Some people go swimming in the rivers, that's not for me. I don't want to go swimming with the gators, but I think to each their own. So you can do whatever you want, but that's just my two cents. Don't go swimming in the river. So there's alligators. You'll be okay with the gators as long as you don't try to swim with them. Make sure to keep your dogs leashed. 
and keep them away from those waters as well. Snakes. I've never seen them while I've lived here, but as long as you keep your grass clean and cut short, you shouldn't run into them either. In the summertime, you'll need to shower in bug spray because the noceans, these little tiny bugs are gonna eat you alive. So make sure you get some nice bug spray and when you go for a walk, go for a walk with your dogs, go for a walk with your kids, go for a walk, you know, just down the street, you wanna make sure you spray yourself with those bug sprays because um, you'll need them. <laughs> okay, also, we have cockroaches. I mean, when we first moved into our house, it was vacant for a couple of days and the first night we found cockroaches and they're huge and they can fly. So what you wanna do is you, when you start the process of buying a home, just keep in mind when you're going to move in, you also wanna hire a pest control company that will, the first time they will spray the inside and then after that monthly they'll come and spray the outside. It's safe for your animals, usually costs 150 to 200 a year and it's so worth it because you don't have to worry about cockroaches. Number 14, because of the humidity here and being so close to or on the ocean, things rust a lot quicker here. One thing to take note of when you are looking for a home to buy, you want to be vigilant of the age of the home. If it was built prior to 1975, it may have cast iron piping and those are now way past their lifespan and it can cost a lot of money to repipe a whole house. So it's super important to hire a real estate agent like me, who's knowledgeable on this stuff and can guide you to homes with PVC piping or can help negotiate that cost being picked up by the sellers if it's an older home with cast iron piping. And last but certainly not least, number 15. There are a lot of things happening in the Space Coast and Melbourne that makes it an exciting and growing place to move to. Of course, we have the growing space industry. There's a margarita being built in Melbourne, and we also have a high-speed train called the Bright Line that will have stops from Orlando to Miami. It's just a speculation right now, but we are hoping the Bright Line will eventually add a stop in Coco, which will make it way faster and easier to get from here to Orlando or Miami. The owners of Bright Line purchased land in Coco, so Again, it's only speculation, but we are hoping eventually there will be a stop for us. I will add a link below for more info on that. Lastly, we have a new aquarium coming to Port Cape Canaveral that's expected to be complete in 2027 and is expected to be nothing like any other aquarium in the US. So that's exciting. I will also add a link below for more info on that. So there you have it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I hope my list of 15 things you need to know when living in Melbourne, Florida has helped give you a feel of what it's like living here. Even with all the negatives, I absolutely love living in the Space Coast and always feel grateful I get to live in such a great place. To me, the beaches, the sunshine, and the great weather completely outweighs any of the negatives. If you don't feel like Melbourne is the right spot, but you are still moving to the area, I am happy to help you figure out which town or city may work better for you. Make sure to comment below any questions you may have about living in the Space Coast. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Rachel Langley with Florida Lifestyle Realty, and I'll see you in the next one.